Hi, my name is Mark Poulton. I'm a buy and hold real estate investor in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina area. Currently have 15 investment properties under contract on 16. I think we have about uh, three to three and a half million dollars worth of uh, worth of properties right now, not including our primary home. Um, wanted to discuss today the importance of continuing education, for lack of a better term, in your field. One of the things that um, I've been ripped off, I can't even tell you how many times, is HVAC. Um, you know, HVAC, it, it's not a simple system. Uh, let me rephrase that. It actually is a pretty simple system. Um, the way it's implemented uh, is a little bit tricky. Um, but, you know, it's definitely something that anybody can learn if they, uh, you know, they put their, their mind and their heart and, and give it some time. I had, um, I had to replace an, an AC unit at one of my properties, and uh, I wanted to know more. It was an R22 unit. I, you know, went there one day, and there was no pressure in, in the system, so all of the refrigerant had leaked out. Knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have replaced it. I probably would have found the leak and uh, patched it, but I didn't know better back then. So I found a uh, semi-retired HVAC guy who was licensed and started contacting him and he had a bum hip and really nice guy. And I told him, um, I'd like to hire you as a consultant, for lack of a better term, to, uh, to do this replacement, but I want... I want to be there with you and I want to know what it takes to do it. And it took an all day Saturday, um, you know, just to get it up and running in a, in a basic sense. And I learned a lot during that process. I, I'm the one who had to get up underneath the house. I'm the one who had to, uh, you know, do a lot of work. He had the tools like the deburring tool and, you know, was able to solder it. So, um, would probably go back I would I would have insisted that we do some some things differently I actually sized the unit right it was a two ton for a thousand square foot however you know and that's on the paper on the charts I should have gotten a two and a half there really wasn't much insulation in the attic and almost none in the uh, uh, in the walls and uh, old, some of the windows were old so it wasn't real and it had rigid pipe instead of like a flex insulated flex duct Anyways, they're, they're doing good now, but I had to learn a lot to get it to a stable system, and they were very patient. Anyways, in one of my homes, I paid some guys to uh, vacuum out the ductwork, and they did, and they found a lot of stuff, but they just didn't really do that good of a job. And, you know, this house has been a, a nuisance to me for a long time. Uh, the same guy, I had him help troubleshoot this unit. It's a package unit in Old Goodman. And the blower motor had uh, had blown or had gone, and I hired him. I think I paid him like 250 bucks to uh, help me fix it, troubleshoot it. It was also full of dirt. Um, this unit has just been abused, and you know we he took the time, and it was another all-day thing. You know we literally took the top off and just started cleaning everything out. It was it was pretty bad, but. You know, it wasn't doing a good job cooling the house, so I just said, screw it, let's get some new duct work. Um, they were able to do that yesterday in, in the rain. And we turned the unit on, and it's blowing air really, really good. It's just not cold. I didn't really want to deal with it. I was like, well, I mean, we just, we, we actually had just evacuated the system and put in, you know, a, a factory charge of R22. I figured there might have been a leak or something. Uh, I wasn't going to deal with it today. I didn't have my gauges or anything with me anyway, so I, it's nothing I could fix at the, at the moment. Plus, it was raining, and I needed to get home because I was going out. So today, I had to do some errands. I had everything in the car ready to go. And I went there and hooked my gauges up. And because of watching YouTube videos, because of stuff like HVACR school, um, anti HVAC DIY, I think is it. I know other channels that I watch, how they do it. I was actually able to troubleshoot it um, down to the problem. Hooked my gauges up, you know, turned the unit on, nothing changed. Clearly the compressor wasn't, wasn't coming on. Pulled out the uh, capacitor, tested it. Um, 
you know, in this, uh, another part of continuing education is having the right tools. I have a Klein multimeter. It's not the super duper looper one that uh, the HVC guys have, but um, I know how to use it. I know how to check, you know, capacitors. Uh, the capacitor was good. I mean, it was barely out of spec. I mean, just barely. Uh, the contactor was working. You know, I checked voltage. Voltage was right. And so then I started to check, um, started to check the actual compressor and the three uh, three wires that come off of it. Um, what I got wasn't good. I was I was worried of two one of two things. One, the people who were doing the duct work they also wanted to replace the unit, but I thought maybe they sabotaged it. I doubt it because they've done a lot of work for me in the past. But you know that uh, little doubting Thomas is always in the back of my mind. Or two, the compressor was blown, which seemed a little odd to me because it was working fine last week. Um, you know it wasn't doing a good job cooling the house, but that was mainly duct work related. So I started to, um, you know, I started to, to ohm out the um, compressor, and had you know the readings worked good. I ended up taking the cap off of the off of the compressor, and I, I thought about not doing that um, because I didn't want to go in and actually test the. Um, I didn't I didn't want to test the terminals inside the cap, but it was obvious that once I um, once I took the cap off, what the problem was is one of the wires. It had disconnected from the connector. I think that uh, there was a power surge, uh, you know, a month before, four weeks before, and I think maybe it had arced or, or something. Between that and, and just being out in the weather, it, it had corroded and, and disconnected. At that point, I sent some pictures to my HVAC guy. I don't want to mess with it because it's a, a system from 1995. I want him to come in. He can do it. You know, he's going to be a lot more careful. If I break the tab off of, off of the uh, compressor, it's, uh, it's lights out at that time. We've got to replace the compressor, which it's an R22 system, uh, which is an older but better refrigerant, which means I have to pay $3,900 for a new system. I'd rather not do that. So I guess the moral of the story or the lesson to be learned is, you know, get to know your trade. Um, my wife asked me, you know, is it save us any money by me figuring out what it was? Well, yeah. Um, I would think my HVAC guy would appreciate the fact that I'm like, here's what needs to get done. You don't need to troubleshoot it. I've, I've gone through it. You know, I tested the capacitor. You know, it's getting the voltage contactors good. Here's a picture of the problem. You know, he comes out. He doesn't have to go through that process. He can just, you know, straight up fix it. Maybe hook some gauges up, turn the system on. So, um, and I would appreciate that knowing when I was coming out exactly what needs to get done. I don't have to, to mess around and, and to try to figure that out. Also, when you're in a pinch, um, you know, like it's a Saturday now, I'm sure I could have gotten him to come out today, but he's a nice guy. He has a family. You know, Monday's fun. Um, it's not that hot. So, and the lease hasn't started for the people in there either. So even though they're living in there, they get to, uh, I guess, suffer a little bit for a couple of days, but it, it'll be worth it in the end. You know, knowing enough about this to be able to troubleshoot it, knowing that, um, you know, an HVAC guy comes out and tells you something, you can go back and verify it, you can check it, uh, ask for the proof, you know, you don't have to take his word for it. So, anyways, that's my thoughts on uh, continuing education and, and knowing knowing your business, knowing the, the trade part of your business, you know. You have two choices, I guess. One, you can be ignorant and you're gonna to have to take the word of somebody every time there's a problem. Or two, you can get down there and get a little dirty, know a little bit about it, watch the videos, do some yourself, and, and be educated, and therefore you're not going to get ripped off. Choice is yours, what are your, what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments section below. Subscribe, hey, just watch the, watch the video till the end, you'll be the first one to do it. So uh, I wish you success.